this lesson will provide a basic usage tutorial for CS3D imaging software. There are very detailed feature-specific lessons available for every aspect of CS3D imaging, but this lesson will allow new users to jump right in and become familiar with the software basics. To begin, we will open the CS3D imaging software by double-clicking the icon on the desktop. You will then be asked to browse to the location of your patient's scan data. Click the plus sign next to the main folder to expand it, single click to highlight the first slice of the scan, then click OK. You will see the software preparing and rendering the images, and then it will open up into your patient's full scan. Alternatively, if you are working directly from a scan in a folder, you may open the folder, left click and drag any DICOM or DCM file from the folder, and drop it right on top of the desktop CS3D imaging icon to open the scan. Once the scan is open, it will likely default to the orthogonal slicing tab. This tab gives a great overview of your patient's scan from all of the different planes. In the upper left, there's the axial orientation, which allows viewing of the volume bottom to top, top to bottom. In the lower left, the coronal orientation allows us to view back to front, front to back. In the lower right is the sagittal view, which allows us to move right to left, left to right. And in the upper right is the three-dimensional rendering. The three-dimensional rendering can be rotated in any direction with a left click, hold, and drag. Movement and navigation through the different views may be done in two ways. Please note that all of the different views are color-coded. In the axial view, there's a yellow tab in the upper right-hand corner. In the coronal view, there's a pink tab, and in the sagittal, a blue-green tab. The colors of these tabs correspond with the movement handles available along the sides of the different view frames. So, if I wanted to move up or down, inferiorly or superiorly through the axial plane, I could simply move my mouse to the yellow movement handle, the cursor will turn into a double arrow, and then I can left click and hold and drag the movement handle up or down. The same holds true for the coronal view. and the sagittal view. This is a good method for making large movements, but if I want to make smaller, more incremental movements, slice by slice, I simply move my mouse to the view that I want to scroll through, hold or hover my mouse over the image, and begin scrolling with the scroll wheel on my mouse. This allows me to move slice by slice in any direction. Another important tool is the Maximize button. This button allows you to bring any viewing plane to full screen. Once in full screen, all other software functions are still available for use. To come back out of full screen, notice that the Maximize button has now become a Minimize button. Another useful viewing option is the Curved Slicing tool. Simply click the tab to access this view. Curved Slicing allows for visualization of the patient's scan at any point along a panoramic curve. Along with the panoramic image, the other image that appears is a transaxial cross-sectional view. Please note the blue tab in the corner of this image which corresponds to the blue movement handle. You may use the large blue ball in the panoramic image to move through your cross-sectional slicing. Or, again, for incremental movements, simply place your mouse over the image and scroll with your mouse's scroll wheel. It's important to note that there's also a smaller blue ball on the blue movement handle. By default, 
The cross-sectional view in the lower right-hand corner is a true vertical cross-section along the long axis of the blue movement line in the panoramic image. Depending on what region you're viewing, you may not always want to see a true vertical cross-section. The smaller blue ball allows you to left-click and hold and adjust the angulation of the long axis. This is important as it will affect the accuracy of your measurements. From here, you may identify a point where you would like to do a measurement. Please remember, all measurements done on your patient's CBCT scan are one-to-one -one measurements and require no calibration. To do a linear measurement, single-click the ruler tool in the toolbox, move to the slice where you would like to take your measurement, do a single left click at the first point, then a single left click to complete the measurement. The same will apply for a width measurement. You can do as many measurements as you like. Another really useful tool, the Oblique Slicing tab, allows you to tilt and rotate slice planes to isolate and examine 360 degrees around a region of interest. This is ideal for rotation all the way around a virtually placed implant to evaluate placement in bone, evaluation of root canals that are difficult to visualize, lesion examination and other pathological evaluation, and much more. To use the Oblique Slicing tab, just click the tab, Use the movement handles to center on your region of interest, or, even easier, scroll in one plane to your region of interest, and then, using your mouse's scroll wheel like a button, simply single-click the scroll wheel to center all planes on your region of interest. Please note, you can click on Mouse Settings in the upper left under Adjustments to change the active setting for your mouse wheel. Choose Slide to use your mouse wheel to scroll slice by slice through any cut plane, and choose Zoom to use your mouse wheel to zoom in or out when scrolling. Under Adjustments, click to open the 3D Adjustment tool, and then under Planes, click to display the cropping box. This will allow you to isolate your region of interest. Now, click on the mouse settings in the upper left under Adjustments to change the setting for your mouse wheel from Slide to Zoom. Scroll with your mouse wheel to zoom in on your region of interest. You can now rotate the planes of the multiplanar views using the smaller grab handle within any plane. To reset the views, you just click the reset button under planes. You are now prepared to use the basic functions of CS3D imaging. We have lessons available to cover all aspects of the software, so please explore our other tutorials. Please also take note of the system requirements for best software performance. For more information on this or any CareStream Dental product, please call us at 800-944-6365 or visit us on the web at carestreamdental.com.